Hello and welcome to Tipton, Missouri. I'm Travis Bowley with the Oregon California Trails Association and today we're at the trailhead for the Butterfield Overland Stage. In the summer of 1858, William Tipton Seeley founded this town of Tipton and here's a marker dedicated to his memory. This was the beginning of the trailhead because the Missouri Pacific Railroad ended right behind me. And that first ride of September 16, 1858 began right here. John Butterfield Sr. rode from St. Louis to here with the mail, unloaded the mail with his son, John Jr., to the stage station across the street, loaded in the passengers, and they set off west towards San Francisco. Also on board that first stage was a 23-year-old New York Post reporter named Waterman Ormsby. He paid $1,050 to ride from Tipton to San Francisco and wrote a book. The Oregon California Trails Association publishes a quarterly publication called the Overland Journal. And in the summer issue, we have a new article, The Butterfield Makes the Southern Overland Trail His Own by Gerald Honert. It's a great, great look at the history of the Butterfield. He dispels a lot of the myths and rumors, such as they were using Wells Fargo coaches, which they weren't. And I really highly recommend picking that up. But we're gonna show you a lot of the different stage stations and locations on our journey today. We're standing in the empty lot where the stage station stood in September of 1858. It took about nine minutes from John Jr. to bring the mail over from the train to this location and to load the passengers. The 200 residents of the town gathered around, but as Waterman Ormsby recorded in his book, it was eerily quiet except for one remark. Not a cheer was raised as the coach drove off, the only adieu being goodbye, John, addressed to John Jr. by one of the crowd. Two blocks to the northwest of the station here in Tipton is the oldest surviving home from that time, the 1858 Mackley House. It was originally built as a school for girls, but by 1861 had become the headquarters of John C. Fremont during the Civil War. Fremont, of course, being the famed explorer of the American West. The state of Missouri placed these state historic site markers in 1958, but usually they're not located where the stations were located. This one here in Tipton along Highway 50 is actually about a half mile south of where the actual station was. That's the case with most of them. Sometimes they're even a couple of miles away. This one's pretty neat though because it lists all the stations in Missouri and the other side has a bit of history about the Butterfield. We moved down the trail about five miles to the little town of Syracuse, Missouri. Tipton was only the trailhead for really the first year of operation. By the summer of 1859, the railroad had reached Syracuse. Syracuse grew to be a town of about 8,000 people in those days. Today, it's only about 172 people, but it does still have a little bit of a business district, including the Syracuse Gift Depot, which hosts the sign for the, uh, the trail here. So we popped inside the Syracuse Antique Depot and met Harold, the proprietor there. He's also the preacher here at the Syracuse Baptist Church. And he said, I've got a little mini museum in the basement of my church and I want to show you. So here are some cannonballs, another shot that he found in the area. Tell us a little bit about this. Well, the, the cannonball was found uh, right by Keeble's store. It tore, tore down a few buildings and along the buildings uh, was a, what the cannonball and several have found cannonballs right around town whenever Again, uh, Civil War broke out, and the first thing they burned was the, the train station. And it was actually four skirmishes in Syracuse. This town, they used the uh, the church for uh, kind of barracks and a hospital. And as uh, soldiers died on both sides, then they planted kind of a mass grave. Uh, the Union actually took over the city, and they would uh, plant people in town to find Southern sympathizers to execute. So it was real devastating during that period of time. Well, that's wonderful. Let's go out and have a look at the cemetery. So So the 1958 historic trail marker that the state placed is up in front of the Syracuse Gift Depot on Highway 50, but the 1920s stage station marker is here. It says Shackle, the Shackleford Station. This was what they called the supper stop. Behind me is the two-story building where passengers could get dinner or room for the night. The actual stage station is about a half mile south of here. So right across the street from the Shackle, Shackleford Station marker that we just visited, is this little marker here in the city park in Syracuse. Our friend Harold, who we just met, 
is responsible for getting this placed here. There's not a memorial in the cemetery where the 100 dead from the Civil War are located, but this is their memorial. It also mentions it's the western terminus of the Pacific Railway. So I'm now standing here with State Representative Warren Love. He's from Warsaw. I'm from Osceola, Warsaw oh, area. He's from the Osceola, Warsaw area, so a little bit south of where we are here in Cole Camp. But he's got four stations on his in his district and a little bit of a personal tie. I do. You know, in doing some genealogy research a few years back, I found out that I had a great-great-grandmother that actually moved to Missouri in 1858 and was employed with, at the Bailey Station wow. as a cook and a maid. She had two little boys. One of the boys named was Jesse, ended up being my great-grandfather. And he would have been about 14 years old when the stage would have been running through from tip to Missouri to California. So never did know him or know of him, but anyhow, I could just imagine, you know, he would have probably knew how to harness horses and help maybe clean out some stalls, and things that they would have done at a stage station back in those days. So we're in Cole Camp, Missouri, and I'm here with Jen Bradshaw, and we're at the Burns Relay Station sign for the Butterfield Overland Trail. If you recall earlier, I said that these signs weren't placed until 1958, and they're generally not where the stations were. And this is actually very true here because the station was six and a half miles south of here. But Jen's been doing something very interesting on the Butterfield with bicycles. You mind telling me about what you've been doing? I ride on the Butterfield on my bike. I was actually uh, the first person to ride the whole route in Missouri. I rode from Springfield to Jefferson City. It took me three days. I had all kinds of weather and it was an adventure that I will never ever forget and I, I can't wait to repeat. It all started on a gravel road ride. Uh, my friend Mac Force, who this all happened because he was going to meetings with Kaysinger Basin Regional Planning Commission and they said to him, do what you can with what you have in your own area. And during the meeting, we looked at different routes and what was safe for cycling. And I definitely saw a lot of opportunity linking our own communities together from Warsaw up to Cole Camp. And we were on a gravel road ride from Warsaw to Cole Camp and we saw a stone marker that said Butterfield Stage Experience. And we thought, huh, what's this? And we had no idea that it was a historical route at that time, but we did some research. We found some other stones and we thought, wow, we can connect our three towns in our county with gravel roads. We don't have to go on anybody's private property. We don't have to get anybody's permission. And we moved um, quite quickly before the actual plan was even done. We already had people riding the whole trail experience from Springfield to Jeff City. Um, and we connected Warsaw and Lincoln and Cole Camp with the Butterfield Stage Experience. We hooked nine counties together and 27 different main streets together. So really taking that small town uh, feel and linking them all together. Well, I've noticed uh, looking at a website that there's GPS coordinates that guide you along the trail. Uh, Tell me about how that got developed. Yes, Brent Hugh actually heard about what we were doing here, how we were trying to connect Benton County with gravel roads and um, he just kind of rolled with it and ended up connecting Springfield to Jefferson City with Ride With GPS. So all I had to do was download an app on my phone and download the uh, routes onto my phone and then I would just hit a button and it would prompt me on the turns. Well this site's pretty significant. We're here at the courthouse but right across the street is is the Reeser Funeral Home which I understand was the Nichols Tavern in the 1850s when yep. this began. Tell me a little bit about that. This was a major major area um, especially with the river and all the steamboats coming up. This was a, a major uh, area for all kinds of um, uh, travel and uh, uh, goods being moved around. When it was the Butterfield stage coach route, people would disembark there. Uh, a lot of them never left. From what I have read, uh, Warsaw has long been a center for travel and trade. It was right on the river and a lot of people came there. It was right on the frontier and they either made their life on the frontier or stayed in Warsaw and um, developed a service to uh, help the people that were on the frontier. So now I'm here with Lynette Stokes of Benton County Tourism and Recreation. We are a rural community, um, very hometown. It's got the hometown feel, but we have a lot of wonderful like 
just natural assets that we feel like with the history tied into that can really play a big part in tourism and really benefit our small rural area. Our whole trail master plan for the city of Warsaw has been outstanding. We've been able to put a lot of check boxes of completions on our trails master plan with the mountain bike park and um, all the Drake Harbor uh, trails uh, up and down our levees. This was the next big link for us. Um, we wanted to hook up into the uh, Katy Trail and we wanted to hook down to the Frisco High Line Trail and the Butterfield was the perfect uh, reason to make it happen. You know, we have the Butterfield 60 race um, in November um, and part of those those areas we as, are part of the, the Butterfield 60 routes. We started it last year. Mm -hmm. Yep, and when, when everything was kind of, you know, moving together as far as the um, the Butterfield Stagecoach, uh, you know, route and what Mac had, had spoke about earlier. Um, you know, that's kind of where we, Mac decided to go ahead and we needed a race and let's ride it and it, everybody loved it. I have, you know, there's footage from people talking about how wonderful just the scene is, the scenery, um, the wildlife, <laughs> the horses and the cows and basically and just the markers, um, you know, the history um, that's tied into all of our communities is, is amazing. So, we've taken you down the Butterfield Trail for about 60 miles, starting in Tipton, through Syracuse, Florence, Coal Camp, and now here in Warsaw on the Osage Arm of the Lake of the Ozarks. As you can see, there's lots of history, natural beauty, and bountiful recreational opportunities. So I hope you get a chance to come to Missouri, explore the Butterfield. Like I said, this is just the first 60 miles of a couple of thousand mile long trail. There's so much to see and explore and learn on the Butterfield Trail.